Hi everyone, thank you again for tuning in to another episode of the Eternum Labs podcast. Today we have a very special guest on the show, Roger Snipes. He is a WBFF fitness competitor, he is a coach, he is a personal trainer, and he is a biohacker. Today we discuss all of the different technologies and systems that he uses in order to optimize his body and optimize his life. Before we get started on the show, I'd just like to talk about sleep for a second, because obviously sleep helps you get into the highest, best performing part of yourself ever and our product Eternum Labs Zen is one of the best products for that. It has a very unique blend including all of the different things that you need and nutrients for your body to help you get in one of the best sleeps possible and if you'd like to use a discount code you can use the discount code Corey in order to get 10% off of your first purchase. So without any further ado, guys, I hope you enjoy this podcast as much as I did. So uh, I shot a message to Terry Cruz to ask whether he'd like to come on my podcast. And it was a bit of a weird one because shortly afterwards, he followed me and I was like, okay, cool. This is going to happen. And he read the message, you know, it says seen on Instagram. I was like, okay, he's going to reply. And he never replied. And I was like, do you know what? You follow my content. That's cool. We'll just leave it as that. (laughs) But, you know, he didn't have to, you don't have to press accept when someone sends you a message. You could just look at it and then just delete it. Mm. But maybe he he had, maybe he was thinking, do you know what? Maybe I'll reply. And then he was like, nah, changed my mind. So (laughs) the fact he accepted, I appreciate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's seen it. Who knows what happens in the future? Maybe one day he reaches out and you're like, Hey, man, he's like, I saw that message ages ago, bro, and <laughs> I'm going to jump yeah, on Yeah, yeah. Maybe we need to be more, I don't know, eye-to-eye level. Right now, he's looking, he's like, you're not quite there yet. <laughs> when the time comes. <laughs> 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 Me, Preston, accept so you, so you can see the scene is just a way to let you know, just keep working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, keep working, oh, getting it done. I am... Um... I inboxed and oh, I messaged uh, Badrus Kulian. I'm not sure if you know who he is, but he's um he's a he, he's a big podcast speaker, and I heard him on one of Sean Stevenson's podcasts. Okay, yeah, the Model Health Show, and mm-hmm. his story was so inspiring. And I was like, I'm gonna message this guy, and he's super like mental challenging. Like mm. he challenges a lot of people, and I messaged him, and I was like, "Hey, bro, I'd love to be on the show." I explained all the all the stuff on there, and he messaged back, and he was like, "Oh, it's good to see how many podcast episodes you got out." And I was like, "Thank you." He's like, "When you get to a hundred, reach back out, and I'll jump on." I was like, "Challenge accepted." Okay. <laughs> I was like, "See you Is next week, man." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "See you next week." <laughs> I got thirty podcasts <laughs> to do real quick. <laughs> what is his name? What's his name? Uh, Badros Kulian. Bay Dross Coolian. Yeah, I'll see if I can spell it for you. He's um yeah, I just see him out, man. His stuff's actually like, his story's quite fantastic. He um like B E D actually I'll just I'll just send him I'll send you a message. Yeah. Yeah, he was just like inspiring story because he just come to America with like absolutely nothing. They were like living out of absolute just like 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 trash cans and stuff. And then he just like focused on fitness, got really healthy, and then just built an empire out of gyms. And it's just like the story of it, transition, was crazy. I love that. I love those rags to riches stories because sometimes it, there's there's parts of it what you can resonate with, you know? You, you resonate with it. Um, if you resonate with someone's story just just a little bit, then you can, you can amplify it or fan the flame of it in your own way, hmm. you know? You know, I grew up in poverty. Um, my dad didn't have much, um, you know, crime stricken area. I got involved in crime myself. Um, I'd taken drugs in the past. I've done lots of crazy stuff. Hmm. And when I think about where I was and where I am now, it's like, sometimes I'm like, wow, like, how did that happen? Like, I'm, I'm so, I'm so blessed. You know, I just remember my mindset at the time and I was homeless as well. And just the, the thought of thinking that perhaps this is my life. This is my future. This is, this is what my destiny is. I'm supposed to live on the street and, you know, rob to live and that kind of thing. I, that was how I was. But then when I managed to get out of that situation and then I started to read books on mindset, 
it's it's been an amazing journey but then when you hear about other people who's been through some stuff you're like yeah 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 i hear you yeah i was there as well so it's really incredible and you know that's the sort of thing i like i love movies like that of you know true stories of where a person was just going through some i don't know adversity of some sort and they've managed to um just make a complete turn in their life um i think those things are really important because I think a lot of people create their own obstacles. Most of the time it is, in all fairness, because it's mindset. That's that's the first obstacle. But a lot of people, when you listen to the way they speak, you're like, wow, like you are blocking yourself on every turn you go. You're not even <laughs> trying, you know? And it's it's really unfortunate. And sometimes these people need to be more... Um, it's like they they need to be given the breadcrumbs to follow in the right direction, you know, because everything else around them is is really hindering their view. So, yeah, I'll well, definitely check out this dude. Yeah. Well, <laughs> firstly, thanks for jumping on the show. Secondly, um, man, I didn't know that. What was like the transition point for you when like you were coming up, like to change to be like, all right, I'm gonna start getting incredibly like fit and healthy and then going on to you know all of the crazy mindset the super biohacking like literally becoming your best self what was like yeah. what was the turning point that helped you sort of skyrocket all the things that you do now i think it was it was all in different stages. It was never like, a, you know, an epiphany <laughs> moment. <laughs> yeah. Wish it was, right? <laughs> yeah, no, right? Was, a lot of people do think that in, in many people's lives, that like there was a moment, let's say, for instance, a person was skinny and then all of a sudden they're muscly. Uh, what was that one moment? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes there's a bit of that, but sometimes a person is just trying for years and then eventually things might change. Um, <clears throat> I lived with... Uh, an alcoholic abusive father and he would uh he would say a lot of things to really put me down basically so i had extremely low self esteem and my way of escape was uh sprinting i used to enjoy sprinting so it gave me a sense of i don't know achievement i was pretty good at running so i'd race a few people in in the neighborhood and you know i'll gained a little bit of a reputation. So <clears throat> my dad could see this at the time and he could see that I was trying to improve my my speed by doing push-ups and squats and stuff and because I was in a in a in a crime-stricken area he wanted to make sure that I wasn't out too much. So then he decided to buy me some weights. He saw that I was always talking about certain athletes that I was watching on the TV, like Linford Christie was my hero back in the day. Don't know if you know him. He's a guy who was really good in the 90s, you know, showing my age now. So Linford Christie was a 100 meter sprinter and I believe he'd done 200 meters as well, but mainly 100. And he had this really nice physique, a really nice sleek physique. And I was thinking, wow, Maybe if I had a body like him, I'd be able to run even quicker. Mm. So my dad got me some weights and I would just be there in my bedroom, just training and training like, yeah, one day I'm going to be like him, you know? And, you know, slowly my, my friends were like, your, your body's kind of changing. You're getting a bit of muscle. But, you know, I couldn't see it. All I saw was how I wanted to look. You know, so me as a kid thinking, eh, not quite, I'm, I'm hoping to get there. So, you know, I kept pushing myself daily and daily. And, you know, slowly my body started to transform and I was getting more and more compliments. But even though on the exterior I was looking be better, uh, internally it was, it was a dark place. Because as I said, my dad was an alcoholic abusive man and he would say some really horrific things to me. Like he would make me feel that I was worthless. And I learned later it was simply because he was abused by his father, my granddad. So basically it just came down to me, you know, I just, I just got all of it really. So I didn't really have 
great self-esteem. Although I was training to feel better, it would work temporarily, but inside I just wasn't feeling good. And then I had a friend who had a, a, a science magazine that was called, I think it was called Focus. And in this magazine, it had these audio tapes, which was by a guy called, well, it was an advert for audio tapes by a guy called Brian Tracy. I don't know if you know him. I love Brian Tracy. Eat that frog first. Yeah. 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 He's, he's amazing. Like he, he, he really saved me. And uh, so in this magazine, it said, <clears throat> um, it was, it was a book called, um, Ad advanced learning techniques. And I was like, I'm terrible at school. I, I really, like, I really wanted to learn, but I felt as though I just had this, like I was, um, how can I put it? I just couldn't learn. I thought my brain was broken. Like I'd look at books, I'll try and read it. But for some reason it just wasn't absorbing. Mm. I was failing tests all the time. I was like, why is it I can't learn anything? <laughs> So I thought if I could find out how to advance my learning techniques, that would be great. And um, so in this magazine, it had these tapes, <laughs> cassette tapes, which were free for 30 days. And um, like a 30, uh, yeah, 30 day three tr free trial. And if you like it, you can buy it. And I thought to myself, well, I'm not going to buy it because I can't afford it. <laughs> I'm living in poverty. Uh, and it was like 60 pounds uh, back in the 90s, like 60 pounds. And I was like, I think about 15 years old. And I was like, I cannot afford 60 pounds. My dad was giving me like a pound a week pocket yeah, money. Yeah, 60 pounds for people who are listening. If you're from Australia, that's like 160 bucks, <laughs> something like that, $140. <laughs> that's so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I ordered this, these cassette tapes and I just remember lead, li listening to it, um, uh, every day, like, you know, a new cassette and just like allowing it to digest. And, you know, there was little techniques in there, which were helping me feel a bit more confident about myself. Like one of the things in there was explaining that we can create our own block by telling ourselves that we're not intelligent. And, because of that itself, I needed to overcome that. And so I started to use affirmations. And that was one of the things that he said in there. And there was some other stuff. Obviously, this was back in the 90s. So I can't remember all of it. But I just remember after, after listening to that and then sending it back, because I you could get blank cassettes and just copy them. And that's what I done. I just copied it. And then I was listening and listening and listening. And I was thinking, this is amazing. I wonder if this guy has done any more. And he, um, I, I borrowed another magazine from my friend and then there was another one called um, uh, Conversation, The Power of Persuasion. And I was like, wow, if I knew how to talk to people, then maybe I can, I can achieve more out of life. Um, because I, I, was, I was just terrible at speaking to people. I was terrible with eye contact. Um, body language was terrible. Like everything was just out of sync to where I wanted to be. So <clears throat> the author of this book, I think his name was, uh, oh, I can't remember, um, Colin something. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. But, um, sorry? I said, doesn't matter. All good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll try to find it. So when I got that, I, I thought, yeah, it was the same sort of thing. Cassette tapes and uh, record it, send it back. <laughs> and those two are a godsend, seriously. It really changed my perspective on a lot of things. I started to be more mindful of the words that I was saying, mindful of the words that other people were saying as well. And it taught me a little bit about body language. And that's when I started to focus a lot more on making sure that there was congruency in what I say and my body language and understood that body language spoke for most of a person's communication, you know? So I was like, wow. When I realized that uh, I was looking at the floor when I was speaking, I was mumbling words and, and stuff like that. I slowly started to change that. It wasn't, it wasn't like a hundred percent straight away, but every time I was speaking, I was starting to become very mindful. And even my friends around me who lived in the, you know, the, the crime stricken area, 
um, I just understood that we all spoke a similar language and I didn't really want to be in that. Cut a long story short, um, I ended up running away from home when I was 17. You know, I wanted to uh, commit suicide a few times because, you know, the stress was really getting deeper and deeper. Um, I just had such low self-esteem and my dad was just telling me stuff. He, he was telling me things like, uh, you're not my son. And uh, many, many things, you know, it made me feel just worthless about myself. So ran away from home. And one day I just decided I wanted to um, go to my stepmother's house who divorced my dad at the time to see if she could, could take me in. And she didn't know that I was on the street. And she said, yeah, of course. Like, wow, if I, you know, you know, you could have contacted me. So she really saved me. Um, so I stayed at hers and she was a, she, she was an educated woman and she was very much into books and stuff. And it really encouraged me to read more and more books. And, um, yeah, that slowly developed over the years and, and my training had never really stopped. Um, because of that combined with the training, it just really helped to, I guess, build me as a character. Um, but yeah, there's lots of things in between i don't know where you want me to go exactly but that's sort of the beginning nah, dude that's beautiful it's like you know especially like knowing that from you now because how you portray yourself and like how you are like literally just who you be just like oozes confidence and you have this like real calm like persona about you that's just like you know i'm me i'm confident i do what i do and it's like great to see man so like what a transition God bless you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. No. no, it's so good. I'd also like to just like out of curiosity, what do you think? Because obviously, like you're a, a physique competitor and you're one of the best in the world at that. Oh, so wow. Thanks. Where do you where do you see like the link between all the mindset stuff and and the body stuff? I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> firstly, I want to say that my, my last competition was in 2015. <laughs> and um, after that, I, I did decide that competing uh, has been great. I've learned so much. Um, however, I've decided to leave that side of things um, to focus more on uh, changing minds of people and bodies of people, just helping, trying to help the world be a better place. <clears throat> with building a physique it does take a lot of mindset but i think people need to focus more on not just the aesthetics but trying to understand this 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 machine like how does it all work you know this biological machine and i think especially when i'm taking on new clients and they want to transform their body a lot of the time they're like i want to lose weight and okay, I get that. And then I learn about all these diets, which they've done, which as you know, diets are crap. <laughs> can people swear on your show or is you it normally You can swear as much clean? as you like, man. Yeah? You can swear the as much Diets are fucking shit, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, you know, it's <clears throat> a reframing of mindset with them or recalibration because from, from what they've learned from the, 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 you know, bullshit celebrity diets and stuff like that. And, the uh, generic stuff which is on social media, it's re really corrupting a lot of people's thought processes of what it means to have a good shape. And this is one of the reasons why I left competing because when I was looking at how extreme people were dieting, I was like, this is not healthy. You know, we shouldn't be trying to achieve below 5% body fat and doing all this sodium manipulation and, you know, this drying out and all this sort of stuff to try to please some fat judges. It's like, mate, you don't even look good. How do you qualify to even judge me? So <clears throat> I thought to myself, do you know what? I can look good without competing. I know I can. I've done it before. So I started to look more into just um, rather than counting macronutrients, just looking into actual foods itself. What are in foods? And I started to un understand that food is information. 
And all different foods provide different information. Some provide good and some provide shit information. You know, so if you're going to eat shit, you're going to look like shit, you know. And but what I found is a lot of people have a bad relationship with food from, from what they've learned, not just from the fitness industry, but from what they've learned at a young age as well. You know, when you're a kid and it's and it's birthday parties, like parents will be like, hey, here's some cake. Oh, you've done so well here. Here's some sweets and here's some more cake. Here's some crisps. Uh, you know, it was a celebration to eat shit food. So <laughs> yeah. when you grow up, you're like, do you know what? I'm going to celebrate. And what do you do? You eat shit food. Oh, but now man. we're adults. We've had the cherry on top where we've now added alcohol on top of that. So we will binge drink and binge eat on garbage, believing that this is a, a, the right way of celebration. So when people go on holidays, it seems to be an important process to eat garbage and drink like, you know, all inclusive hotel and drink as much as you can. And I can say this because I've even been there myself. I'm like, do you know what? I'm on holiday. I'm on holiday. This is my moment where I let loose, you know? I'm, I'm still and, fighting that, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a battle. It's a battle for a lot of people. So it's, it's a mindset shift in in remembering that you you don't trash your body as a form of celebration you know you can actually enjoy good food and have fun in life and this is something that um i have to teach a lot of clients but um yeah mind mind and body they work together they <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> it works together so whatever you feed your body is going to affect your mind and whatever you feed your mind is going to affect your body so it's important for people to try not separate that and realize that it's yeah it's it's one it's one so if people want to think healthy they have to think they have to eat healthy as well um yeah. So what was the question exactly? I'm trying to think where to, where to steer this or whether I've <laughs> I covered just it. Saying like, yeah, just like the connection between obviously like mind and the body. And I think um, you, you covered a lot of that, especially I love, I love how you mentioned how we eat shit food as a reward system. Like, and we've been conditioned through that since we were children. And it's just so crazy to get away from because even just working, like I worked in an office for quite a while and being yeah. in an office, every time we had someone new come in, we had a birthday or we had some sort of celebration. It was actually really awkward. For me, a lot of awkward situations would come up because I'd be in the office and they go, oh, like Corey, we've got these like cakes and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to eat that as tempted as I am. And as nice as that looks and it smells, <laughs> I ain't going to damn eat it. And I was like yeah. the odd one out, which was like, crazy. Yeah. But it's okay to be the odd one out. It's oh. cool. I, I like being the weird one. People are like, oh, you're weird. Thank you. I now take <laughs> it as a compliment. Yeah. To me, that means I'm different. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And I think the good thing is when people see that you look as if you're in shape, they tend to steer away from that. They'll be like, ah, oh, you wouldn't eat this anyway. Not knowing that you would, but you just limit the amount which you eat, which is cool. People assumed I, I never drank when I did at the time, you know, but it was cool that way. I didn't feel like the peer pressure, which a lot of other people would get. Oh, yeah, let's go out for a drink. If you say that you don't drink, then it's like, what's the matter with you? You know, but if you look like you're in shape and you take care of yourself, you, they, they wouldn't even suggest it. So I was actually pretty happy with that. Yeah. What about all the other weird stuff? Like when you use like a PEMF blanket or something like that, do, does any right. of your friends or like people in your network and you're like, I'm trying out this new thing at the moment. I'm going to see how it works. And they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> well, what is that? You alien? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, a lot of my circle right now are probably a bit more extreme than I am. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, you're late. <laughs> really? <laughs> You're only starting that now. You know, I've got I've got friends that have like um, uh, uh, EMF protecting canopies around their bed. 
and they, that'll cost like about um, twelve hundred pounds or something to have this. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, but it's legit. Um, hey, the science is out there; it proves it's all like super legit. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think like when I move, when I have a bigger bedroom, is something I might. I'm, I'm thinking about. <laughs> I'm thinking about. Um, but yeah, you know, most people uh, inquire. They're they they're, they're, they're curious. You know, if they're not in the whole biohacking real health optimization field they're curious they're like because you know they think okay all you need to do is go to the gym train and and eat good and that's enough like forgetting that there's other sciences which can help you to improve your health so i think what works in my favor is because of the way i look people will listen and it's it's helpful for me you know it's unfortunate that on social media, unless you look a certain way, sometimes people can bypass that. Mm. But sometimes like I'll use a photo which shows me looking really lean to get the attention, then I can give the information which I want to try and show them. Because there's times when I will, I will do a post with lots of information where there's not much skin showing and people don't care. <laughs> You know, that's that's the social media aspect. But with close friends, um, they're intrigued. They're like, well, why do you need to do that? Tell me more. You know, um, it, you know, it, it takes a real commitment for wanting to improve your health to want to take it that that next step higher. I think a lot of people are still battling with food and they wouldn't even go to a PEMF or red light therapy or, you know, I've got another thing called a nano V. I can't even explain the technology in that. All I know is that it helps with protein folding and um, increases more, um, uh, oh, what do they call it? The uh, H3O2 water in the cells. Um, I just feel great when I use it. What, does uh, it filter yeah. your water? Is it like, what do you do? Is it just like electrical device? <clears throat> it's a device that, that it, it it blows out these, uh, like a kind of, uh, oof, how do I explain it? Yeah. It's, it's weird. Like it's I need cigarette. to know how to is explain it. Is that what it, it. is? <laughs> 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 it's, um, it's, it's, it, it blows out this, um, it's just air. It just blows out this thing, which is, a, it's like air, but you breathe it in. So normally when I'm on the laptop, I'll just have, it's like a hose that, blows air in my face but the 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 air is constructed in a way that it helps with protein folding and reducing oxidative stress in the body um, it's used by athletes for increasing optimal performance and uh, it's an anti-aging device as well there's so much science behind it i've actually done a podcast with uh, one of the co-founders of the Nano V to explain it in a bit more depth. Yeah, I'll link um, that in the show below because I'm super interested in that one. I want to want to have a suss of that as well. <laughs> oh, it's it's fascinating, and you know because it's there and it's not something that runs out like food. I'm just I use it every day when I'm working. I'll have that on. I'll sit on my PMF and it help with uh, you know cellular rejuvenation and I'm, I'm trying to be as superhuman as possible you know not just to look good but to feel good and to allow me to think better you know to come up with more creative ideas you know how blessed are we to be in that position and to have all of this science like by the way just just putting it out there like we've sort of hit absolute jackpot to be like yeah. i think in terms of how we're living and what we're doing with like just seeing in my perception, a regular person of, of what an absolute regular diet is, I don't exactly agree with, just like myself personally. I'm like, well, it probably could be better. And in terms of how we are like as human beings and the access that we have to like, firstly, if we're starting from the start, just beautiful food to all the knowledge that we can learn to physically pushing our genetic potential to like as far as it can at the moment with all the crazy different science like why mm -hmm. wouldn't we take advantage of that like we are so ridiculously lucky to be able to do that including all the hacks all the supplements everything that we have i just oh man oh it's, it's a beautiful thing 
um, it is an amazing thing what we have, but I, th I think people are still trying to get over the first hurdle. Yeah. And that is just food. You know, <laughs> yes. it's a big thing. They're trapped. They, they are trapped. I remember one of my clients I met at, excuse me, I met at um, a children's birthday party. So my daughter went to a birthday party and um you know there's lots of kids playing about and stuff and obviously when you go to a party there's lots of party food on the table and one of the parents uh picked up the food and was eating it. And i think it was samosas and it was chips and pizzas which was obviously you know probably fried in vegetable oil some sort of you know hydrogenated fat so she was eating it and i just remember watching her eating and i was like does that taste good? And that that changed her life forever. <laughs> she she stopped. She was chewing it, and she looked at me, and she was like, "Well, it's not something that you would eat." And and people do perceive that, which is fine, which is good. And, and then we started to talk about you know how you know party food is simply stuff like this, and this is this is given to the children to eat. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's such a, <clears throat> it's such a, um, it's, it's, how can I put it? it's, it's so engraved in part of our society that you think it's so normal that when it comes to moving away, it's a, it's a real problem. You feel as if you're letting people down, you know, you go around family's house and they want to give you some shit to eat and you're like, that's not good for me. And they'll look at you like, how dare you? Are you trying to say my food is bad? Like, and, and you know, it's, it's that pressure. So before we can even look into the science, people are struggling with that. Not only that, it doesn't, it almost doesn't make sense in you looking into the other science if you can't even deal with the food that you're eating, you know? Um, money is another thing as well, because a lot of these technologies do cost a bit of money. Um, I've got something called a Lumen, which is, um, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's a device that you can breathe in and it can get, and it's like a, like a metabolic tracker. It can tell you whether you are burning fat or burning carbohydrates, like what mode you're in. <laughs> it's, it's technology, like what? It's, it's insane. We are, that, we are that advanced now. So <clears throat> it's good for people who, you know, they're, they're trying to, control their calories um, or just know where, where they are after eating a certain food. I mean, you can use it for different reasons, but it's not for the average person, you know, because I think it costs about maybe 250 pounds or 300. Um, although it's incredible, it's not something that you can pick up for 20 pounds in the shop, which is like, you know, maybe most people. Um, I got another thing here, the Apollo, uh, the battery's dead at the moment, otherwise I'll be wearing it, the Apollo Nero, which helps with, um, it, it's like it stimulates your nerves in different ways. So um, it's got different types of vibrations, which links with your, your autonomic nervous system. And it can, it can, you can use it to, uh, stimulate you in a way to like a pre-workout to make you feel more energetic it can help you to feel uh, more open like if you let's say for instance you're public speaking and you need to speak to an audience or you have a meeting and you you need to present something it can stimulate you in a way through your nerves to deal with the situation um <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. And it's got other types of stimulations to get, help you to relax and get you ready for bed. Um, uh, regeneration after training to help to recover. So, uh, and again, another device, which is around 300 pounds, you know? So we have these amazing technologies around us, but until, until it becomes more widespread, the price is going to be not not achievable for everybody to obtain you know uh, if, if you've got the finances then grab them all you know that's the only thing i'd say about that really
Yeah, for sure. Well, what do you think for people, I guess, like speaking to my audience, uh, here we got business people, entrepreneurs, people focused on longevity, and they're sort of like on the fence about a few things like, hmm, what should I start to invest in myself? I've gone to a stage where I actually just want to focus on myself, invest in myself, either they're getting older or they're like, yep, I'm at a stage, bam, I'm going to start taking life head on. What do you think are some of the best things for people to start investing in? In terms of what, like biohacks or like for their, anything for their health? It could invest be, in, okay, I would so say fitness it, journey. It could be, it'd be like a fitness health journey, but also in terms of lifestyle, it's like whatever you think. Okay, I think definitely get books. I've got a ton of books, <laughs> so many books, um, audio books, um, physical books, and, and, and get them in different areas so that they're not just based on, let's say, functional food or functional medicine, but get it, get it on other areas of science, science as well. Get some, get some mindset books as well. Um, <clears throat> if, you, if you're into uh, spiritual stuff, get some spiritual stuff. I think spiritual health is very important. Um, and yeah, like if you can try and tick all areas, then it makes you more comprehensive and robust as a human being and you'll find a lot of cross-referencing information from these different people where you could be like okay so this person said this and that person said something very very similar so okay that's that's as as good as robust information because that you know these are two reputable sources so i know that this is cool someone else might say something contradicting but it really depends on what you think about that person and their science and how, you know how long they've studied and all that sort of thing so you know it's not black and white with the information you learn you can you can kind of think all right what does my gut instinct tell me about the information i'm learning here you know and that's what i go by so whenever i am talking about stuff i try and give a you know a real subjective view um, so that, you know, people can make up their own minds whether they want to go with it or not. But I just try and give as much information as possible and just be open, just be open to learn new things because you're going to learn stuff, especially this day and age, how we've really advanced in technology, how things just seem crazy, like, wow, we can do that. You know, I remember one of the things what kind of led me into the journey of this whole you know, health optimization or biohacking was just simply checking my body fat. You know, I used to use the um, the skin calipers to check my body fat when I was going on the stage. And then I was reached out by a company that does um, a, a DEXA scan. So I was like, mm, I'd never heard of a DEXA scan. So I, I went along to this, this, this facility and um, was told that what they will do, they will scan my body using a, a small x-ray to, to find out what my subcutaneous and uh, visceral fat levels were. And it was, it was incredible. You know, I was shown on this, on this graph or this report, um, just different areas of both subcutaneous and visceral fat, but they also were able to tell me my bone density and um, fat-free mass and uh, approximately the amount of minerals that was in my bones and how you know, bone density, it was, it was insane. I was like, wow, we can do this? I didn't know this. How come nobody else has told me this before? So it kind of led me on a, on, a, on a real kind of quest, you know, to question what else, what other things are out there? So sometimes when you, when you learn one thing, it kind of leads you on to want to learn other things. Like if you really want to improve your overall health, then follow your instinct and just go with it. So you might listen to a podcast, you hear a guest like Roger Snipes, he talks, <laughs> he mentions a person's name, and then you might decide you want to Google search that person's name. And then go on Amazon, maybe buy their book. And then this person is talking and giving you some real great information. And they talk about another few scientists. You write those person, th those people's names down, you know? And it, it really helps to expand your knowledge because if you, if you like the people that you're listening to, then really take on board people that they recommend, 
You know, like I, I mentioned Brian Tracy, you've mentioned Brian Tracy as well. So it's like, okay, let's look at Brian Tracy. And it can really lead you into, you know, loads of different directions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, from that, I was like, what other technologies are out there? And then I came across a, uh, a company called DNA Fit, which uh, could they could check your DNA through a swab in the mouth and let you know your what sort of training would be most suited towards your genetics. And I was like, really? Have you done that yourself? I've or, done, have I've you heard done of a it? DNA fit one, yeah. I've literally done DNA it. fit, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There it. we go. So yeah. good. Listeners, yeah, take take that on board. <laughs> take DNA. I'll actually put, because you know how DNA fit, every time you, if you do one, they send you like a, to get more people on, they give you a discount code. I'll put yeah. a discount code in the link below just so you guys can get it cheap because it's so good. And it's like with the DNA test, you have it forever, right? Exactly, exactly. And, and those things don't change. You know, they can, they can give you, obviously, <clears throat> as time has gone by, they give you more on your, on your profile. They, they now test for other things. Whereas the first time I'd done it, it was just just a, a few things, a few maybe intolerances or um, I can't remember all of it, to be honest with you. But I've done another DNA test by another company called, I think, I think maybe this company bought out DNA Fit or the other way around. I'm not too sure. Have you heard of Circle DNA? I've heard of Circle DNA, yes. Circle DNA, they offer like a, a real comprehensive report with about, I don't know, like 500 different markers or something or things on the report whereas dna fit was maybe about 10 uh, you know it was really good stuff and it went and they broke down the the science what what sort of what what genes they checked and um how robust each uh science is on that but yeah circle dna is like you know you know that times five thousand kind the of good thing. stuff or oh, sorry 500 <laughs> it's really cool they could even tell you things like well, it's, it's still on the, the early stages of the science, but they can give you an indication of like uh, what, what abilities you might have. Like if you have certain gifts, certain like uh, traits, like whether you are um, good musically, you know, or if you are good at languages, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's, it's amazing, you know. Um, so yeah, yeah, like go with whatever you feel is right, but definitely just check out some books. You know, start off with one book and, you know, when you listen or read the book, see where it takes you. You know, see what you think, okay, what, what, what more do I want to learn of? Because what you'll find is whenever you listen or read a book, it leads you to question things more. <laughs> you don't just think, okay, I'm satisfied. I know everything now. <laughs> yeah. You're like, but, yeah, but I, I, I need to know just a little bit more about this, you know? Yeah. Follow um, the rabbit hole. <laughs> that's follow, it. That's follow it. Alice. <laughs> <laughs> there so we what, go. Yeah. What, are, what are some of the things that you have learned recently that, you, that have been like some of the most important lessons for you in terms of like, oh, that was some absolute gold. I've applied this or taught something mm. else somewhere or really taken something in um absolute gold i don't know i think probably more to do with um i've started to kind of trek a bit more in the area of of spirits and souls like understanding about speaking to my higher self, you know? Um, but, you know, that's almost niche in a sense. Some people might not believe it, but like when you start to look at the bigger picture and think to yourself, well, understand more that it's not just about you and this planet is not the absolute everything. There is more to it. The planet links to a, a much bigger universe, then you start to understand that you have something called a higher self, which is, which holds so much value, which we can communicate with to allow us to do uh, 
better in our physical self. I found that a lot of people really, um, they, 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 they aim really small. So <clears throat> for me, I found that if you can teach people to always aim high and know that all they need to do is to speak to their higher self so that they're always aiming high, then they would be amazed in all the things that they can achieve, you know, through, through life. It, uh, it's, it's amazing. You can literally speak things into existence just through words. And you can speak things into destruction and sabotage everything around you. Yeah. So I've become extremely mindful of the words that I speak into the world, into the universe, uh, not just for myself, but what I could be doing to other people as well. Hmm. And um, yeah, it's something that I, I find quite fa very fascinating because this information here is free. Yeah, you know, it's free, you know, it's, it's free, you know, and it, it, you don't have to think to yourself, I need to have a life like, you know, people in their Instagram photos sitting on Lamborghinis and stuff like that, that can, that can really cause a lot of mental hindrance. If you're looking at that, you, you need to look at something much deeper on a deeper level than this, these material stuff. And, you know, there's times when, you know, like the world can really get in your way. And uh, if you're not careful, it, it can it can take over or separate you from your higher self. So it's a thing which I find really fascinating. And I, it's something that I practice every single day, speak to my higher self, and bring all the great things that I want into existence, and help me to be in uh, integrity to who I'm supposed to be so that I can do my purpose in making other people great as well. Oh man, I absolutely love that. And like massive respect to you as well for doing all the spiritual practice and focusing on all the technology and like using the best of both worlds. It's taking all the ancient philosophies and ancient wisdom, using all the modern science, just to be a better version of yourself. And if anyone, if you're listening and you haven't seen Roger Snipes Instagram. Just go to his Instagram like right now and just and just look at him. Cause like obviously, man, your your body is it's so big and beautiful. <laughs> like oh, bless in terms you, man. of Thank oh, you no, so bro, seriously, appreciation is due <laughs> where appreciation is due, man. Hard work has definitely paid off there. But I think it's like the reason that I mentioned that is because you set such a good example. And mm. and like, oh man, I couldn't yeah, I couldn't praise it anymore because I completely agree. And I think like what's beautiful as well is you can you can sort of track how well you are connected with this with the spiritual side of things with all the technology like it shows up if you're super stressed and you're speaking all those things into existence your heart rate variability drops <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah yeah <laughs> there you go and um yeah yeah there's one other thing that i really wanted to mention there i forgot it was now but yeah i still think it's crazy in there yeah good job bro <laughs> oh god bless you man thank you thank you <laughs> Yeah, it's it's an amazing thing. I'm still learning, you know, I'm still still learning, constantly getting new books. Um, and, uh, you know, trying to trying to enhance all areas of my life, you know, um, not just fitness, but also business as well. So it's, it's fabulous when you can have a good team of people around you to, to help you to uh, expand your knowledge in areas that you're not so great in, you know? Um, and then with that, you can use that and teach other people. So for me, it's all about my podcasts used to be just based around fitness, but now I've, I've really started to divert it to make it a podcast where people can be just informed, like just informed, like trying to get the best people so that they can learn and just be a great person. We're here to be great. So why not be great in as many things as possible? Yeah, especially you know? what you're passionate about as well. Because I remember reading the book, Think and Grow Rich. And one of the, like, it was one of the first books that I probably read. And I remember that there was one of the facts in there said that they have proven the law of attraction is more real. They've got more science around the law of attraction 
than what they do around how gravity works. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And that's Amazing. like interesting to what you said when you said that when you first started reading, like back in your journey, you started you know, speaking positive affirmations. Then yes, you sort of went through hell and went through all of this shadow stuff and these these fought these demons with your dad and on the streets and drugs and alcohol and all the rest of it. But, you know, you learnt those affirmations and you did all of those things. And like it's funny how you come around now and it's like that's sort of my spiritual practice. I speak these things <laughs> into existence and I, I take action on them and I follow through with all the things that I've said and and th things start to happen and you're like <laughs> Of course. Yeah, it's 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 so incredible because, like, you know, when you see things start to unfold for you, you're like, wow. It's it's like you almost don't want to believe it, but you know it's because you spoke it into existence. Do you have any examples? And, and, and examples? Just out of curiosity, yeah. Can you, is there any examples oh. you can think off the top of your head when you were like, oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know, like, like, let's say, for instance, competing. I mean, there's loads of things. I do it all the time, to be honest. Like, I reach out to companies, I reach out to people, um, investors, um, where I'm like, they will not speak to me. But it's like, I, it's like the spirit is just like going through me and I'm zombified as I'm typing on the keyboard and then I'll send it, you know, and then I'll get a response. I'm like, my God, I actually got a response. You know, I've, I've had so many opportunities, like, yeah, and, and competing as well, you know, it was, um, I don't know, it, 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 things happen for a reason. In my book, um, Your Mind Builds Your Body, I, I explained about, like, almost like the beginning part of my journey. And one, of the, one, one part of my journey was when I used to buy uh, fitness magazines. I used to buy fitness magazines, and I remember one day... I, I bought a, a men's health magazine and I was going to work and I put the magazine down on the table and I was getting dressed. I used to work in an office as well. So I was putting on, putting on the tie and I was just looking on, on the front cover and I was just thinking, ah, I'm hiding this body underneath this front, you know, underneath this suit. And I looked at this guy on the front cover and I thought, I look better than you. How is it you're on the front cover of a magazine? And I was, I was like, I just don't get it. Like, why? And I remember speaking to some friends and I showed them the magazine and I was like, I could be wrong, but do I look better than this guy or is it just my imagination? And they were like, you definitely look better than him. And um, I was like, so how is it his on the front cover and, and I'm not? And they were like, well, that's because nobody knows about you. And I was like, damn. I guess that's true. How do I get people to know about me? And that is what kind of led me in the direction of, okay, let me do something about it. So I started to do a search and I, I believe it's like, you know, my, that was my spirit speaking to me. The moment I looked on the front cover and these questions started to happen, it doesn't have to be like an, a, a massive, like, oh, the heavens opened. It doesn't have to be like that. True. It's just, it's the breadcrumbs, as I mentioned earlier. Like I looked at it and then the question just happened. And it was like, the spirit just dropped the seed in my head and it just started to grow and blossom from there. Yeah, but you listened. So as I started, hmm? I said, but you listened. Yes, yes. And I think a lot of people get these signals from life, but they don't listen. They, 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 they hear it, but then they might listen to the voice of what other people say. They're like, I really want this, but my parents said this, or my friends said this, and they value their opinion more than their own intuition, which is pretty much their higher self speaking. So I just kind of followed this and, you know, it led me to do some research and then I decided to go for a photo shoot. That was like my, my first initial step into anything. I'd never done a photo shoot. And this was, I looked into it in 2010, no, 2009. And I'd done a photo shoot in 2009. And the photographer said to me, like, wow, you're a natural. Have you thought about competing? And I was like, competing? I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm scared standing here taking pictures. Why would I want to compete? 
you know? Yeah, because when I look back at the photos, some of them, I felt it was very diff uh, difficult. I was really awkward. Uh, some of the pictures I was okay in. Um, but like, you know, again, like, you know, it was, it was uh, you know, the universe kind of aligning stuff, like went to this specific one because he knew about um, a, a, a natural competition. All I knew about was IFBB pros and massive Olympia bodybuilders. So I was thinking, how on earth do I fit in this equation? You know, I'm way too small and I'm not gonna start taking drugs. So he told me about this, which led me on a quest to learn a bit more about it. And I went to watch a show, first of all, and the inspiration and the feeling that this could be me led me to start making some kind of movements in that direction. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing when that happens. Yeah, oh, so true. And I think that, you know, as you were speaking, what I was thinking about was some people would also find it difficult. I know I have. Sometimes you'll get like, as you said, little spirit drops will come out and you're like, I don't know if I want to do that because that's hard. Well, there's, yeah. there's resistance there. I know that's going to be good for me. And I know that this little leap, whatever it is, as you mentioned, it's not one big thing. It's like lots of little things. It's like, I believe that the universe sort of, as you were saying, keeps sending you little signals. And if you don't listen, he ends up being like, what's easy to experience unhappiness or unfulfillment. Yeah. And if you, you can miss out on so many opportunities. Yeah. Sorry, do you need to go? No, <laughs> Was you going to? Not at all. Please continue. I think, um, you know, signals will, will come back again. You know, I think they come in cycles. Uh, universe speaks to you one time and um, it, I don't know, it's like, it's like a bus that comes by and the, the doors open and you can get on it or you might be like, oh, no, no, not this time. And then it goes away and, and then it comes back another time. Oh, great. Um, so, you know, opportunities do come, but sometimes it, it comes in a, in a way that it can be, quite uncomfortable you know it's like oh i know I, i'm supposed to do it but i'm scared and i think it's it's okay to be scared but i think what is also important is to understand that these are these are you know the reason why we're scared is because it's 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 important when you start to tie it together in understanding that it's because it's something that you really want and also when you start to train yourself to deal with resilience or difficult situations, these moments start to become a bit easier to deal with. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a saying or analogy, um, feel the fear, but do it anyway, you know? So, uh, you know, like, and another one is, um, you know, jump from the cliff and grow your wings on the way down. So this is the way I, I, I take an approach to lots of things. Like if I don't understand what the outcome is going to be, but I know it's better to try than uh, try and fail than fail to try. I'll just go for it anyway. And there's uh, Les Brown says on one of his books that uh, if you, you know, a lot of people, um, aim too low, you know? And if you keep aiming low and you hit, and you hit your target, then you'll always continue to aim low. So when there's these things which are higher, you won't aim for it. You know, you'll just keep aiming for the, the, the small, the small little, uh, the small targets. Um, there was something else which I was gonna say, I freaking escaped my mind. Cause I was thinking loads of things at the same time. And I was just, <laughs> that was, I was pulling one in and I was like, and then the other one escaped. Um, but, but like, yeah, it's, it's okay to be scared, but like train yourself to be resilient. And this is one of the reasons why when it was winter time, I'd be outside running in the winter in shorts when it's two degrees, this is building resilience or cycling in two degrees or like, you know, it wasn't really minus that often, but most people are fully dressed up because they're so used to being comfortable. They're like, oh, it's cold. It's cold. I need to be comfortable. But if you train yourself to get used to being uncomfortable, 
life becomes so much more easier. <laughs> so much more easier. You know, like when I'm dropping my, my daughter off at school, I'll, I'll wrap her up and keep her warm, but I'll turn up in a t-shirt in winter whilst all the parents is wearing their winter coats and the gloves and stuff. And the, but for me, it's it's building up my strength. And at the same time, it's stimulating brown adipose tissue. So I'm burning fat in the process, you know? So it's a win-win for me. People might look at me like, oh, you're a bit crazy, but you know, but putting that aside for a second, it's helping to build resilience because you know, I can I can factor that in other areas of my life when I want to contact someone, but it, it might be, uh, it might, I might contact a company which has got no business working with me. It's like, why do we need to work with you? You know, but as long if I take that fear out of my head, then that's cool. You know, the, the, the limiter is taken off. I can do whatever I want. And I think that's what people need to do. And that's the reason why in most cases, I don't really have a fear in doing the stuff that I do. And you can, you can get a lot out of life that way. Oh, for sure. I love that mindset, especially building resilience as you were talking. <laughs> There's a couple of times where I've um I've just go for like walks and when it's cold and, and sunny in the mornings, because like, because I got my DNA tested, I figure out like, oh, I've got very low vitamin D. So I'll just take my shirt off when it's freezing and I'll be walking with the sunlight, like on my skin, I'm like sick, free vitamin D. And you get, <laughs> and you get people riding past on a bike like, aren't you cold? <laughs> or they'll say something just like, oh, think you fucking cool with your shirt off. And you're like... <laughs> <laughs> come on man come on but no yeah. have you got any like um like i'd love to hear about a time where you sort of come up to the point where you've been like oh this is scary no actually i'm gonna remove this had the situation and then had some success from it have you got any stories um I don't know, there's, there's the competing, there's um, um, maybe in my first property, when I started uh, in investing in property, I was learning about uh, uh, below market value. So <clears throat> when you are looking to buy a property, obviously the, you want to try and get it as cheap as possible if you can. But at the same time, you want to, you don't want to feel as if you're taking the piss out of the person that you're buying the property from. So that's, that's something tough to get over because you're going to put in an offer which can come across as being, like as if you're insulting them. And yeah, so the first time I started, when, when I started, uh, I started doing courses and understanding about investment and I started putting out offers, which I felt very uncomfortable with. I'm like, wow, this is like 25% below market value. This is an insult. You are literally saying, fuck you. Let me buy your property for dirt cheap. And <laughs> in doing that, I felt very uncomfortable, but I just done it anyway. I'm like, look, this is what I've been taught. Just, just go ahead with it, you know? And you know, you're going to get lots and lots of rejections. And I think when you get those rejections, it makes you feel as though, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing this. This is, you are insulting the sellers, but you have to sort of have faith in the process and keep going and keep going and keep going. And eventually you will find a person, uh, you, which, which they call a, a motivated seller who will happily accept your offer. So when that time comes, then it, it kind of, it gives you validation that, okay, what I'm doing is right. You just, you just need to have faith. And mm. I guess that was one example, really. Yeah, and obviously you're more comfortable there <laughs> and you're more comfortable pursuing because of all the resistance building you're doing. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and that's yeah. it, like, if you, if you want to, if you want to feel uh, less uncomfortable in life you have to do more uncomfortable things <laughs> yes. you know that what's the, what's the saying if, if you want to live uh people who 
uh, do uncomfortable things, live a good life. People who, uh, I can't remember what the analogy yeah. is, but... Uh, get uncomfortable being comfortable is that when no, i get comfortable there's, being uncomfortable yeah there's one. there's there's that but i guess there's different variations of yeah, it would but be, you know what yeah. people who who uh do uncomfortable things live a good life and people yeah. who do comfortable things live a, a bad life yeah you know that they, they don't challenge themselves because they're scared you know they're scared they're, they're, it's normally a case of what other people will say and think of the choices that they make, you know? When I when I was competing, a lot of people were like, why would you want to do that? Why are you trying to show off your body and be like half naked on the stage? I'm like, it's a challenge that I've set myself and I'm doing this for me. And some people won't understand that. And that's fine, you know, because you're not, you, what you need to understand is you should be doing it for your own approval, not not anyone else's. That if if you keep looking out for other people's approvals, you, you're not you're going to have lots of roadblocks along the way because you're going to have to keep asking, "Is this okay for you? Is this okay with you?" Yeah, it is. Oh, it isn't. Okay, I'm I'm not going to move on, and it's it's a terrible thing. There's I know one lady who works in a gym. She works in a gym and has free membership, but she doesn't use the gym. She doesn't use it. She works there as staff, but she will not use the equipment simply because she's afraid of people looking at her and might think that what she what she's doing, she might not know what she's doing. I was like, yeah, it's true. People might look at you and think you don't know what you're doing. So <laughs> you've got a goal to achieve. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's where I guess being like uncomfortable comes to it. And most of the time, like, you know, everyone, everyone's like in, in the gym has been on that journey. We've, when we first gone into the gym, we've all been like, ugh, I don't know what I'm doing. Ugh, not sure what's going on. And everyone gets it. Like everyone understands the gym. <laughs> no one's really looking yeah. like, well, from my experience, I haven't really been in the gym where someone who's going in there with the purpose of trying to be better has been judged. Like not one person. It's like all been celebrating, yeah. which is why I think like the whole personal training side of things is starting to like from my experience, it's starting to evolve because it's not just like personal gym trainer. It's like literally like personal trainers helping you in like all aspects of your life because actually we, like as personal trainers got to motivate people. They got to understand them from all different aspects to try and actually bring an individual up. And I don't want to keep you yeah. too much longer, but I would, no, no. Yeah. I would like I, to I know, mm. I would like to know sort of what you would recommend people who do want to start focusing on their health, what are some of the first things that they should start doing to like really kickstart their um, optimizational journey? I think uh, get books on food and nutrition. I think a lot of it is uh, getting a better, having a better relationship with food. Because I think it's uh, it's it's slightly skewed at the moment, and when you go shopping, supermarkets are only all they care about is selling products. Yeah. Uh, as quick as possible, they're not focused on whether you're going to end up having some metabolic dysfunction or diabetes. They're like, I don't care, just buy my food. That's all they care about. <laughs> so you know, just try not fall in the trap of the advertisement in like, you know, a lot of the stuff, which is buy one, get one half price or, you know, this roll, roll back or whatever. There's, there's different supermarkets that have different um, advertising uh, things. And what you'll find is you'll never get organic food on special offer <laughs> or like, uh, you know, <laughs> grass fed meat or something, yeah. you know, for people who eat meat. What do you like but eating? What do you, what do you, what, like, what works best for you that you found? Just eating as much whole foods as possible. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not just about macronutrients, but I'm about micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, making sure that my, um, my digestive tract is fine. My, you know, hydrochloric acid levels is fine. Making sure, um, if there's vitamins, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. Um, but yeah, for me, the plate mostly has to have vegetables, like saturated with vegetables. 
Mm. Always. I have more vegetables than fruit. You know, I do limit my uh, sucrose and uh, fructose intake. Uh, and it does help with keeping lean. But at the same time, I think I'm trying to avoid any kind of link to fatty liver disease or anything like that. So I just keep that to a minimum. We can still get a lot of minerals from vegetables. So making sure that your plate is super colorful, try and keep away from condiments, uh, you know, like ketchups and mayonnaise and stuff like that, and try and make your own sauce if necessary. You need to recalibrate your taste buds because the things out there are just there to make your taste buds dance, you know, and excited and, you know, get all these dopamine receptors flying all over the place. <laughs> so that's what they're there for. And in the process, you know, just creating some kind of gut dysbiosis or something. So what you need to do is just educate yourself on good, clean food. Try and eat single ingredients, you know, you know, beans, pulses, nuts. Uh, if you eat meat, cool. Eat, you know, the meat. If you can get grass fed, cool. Wild caught fish, cool. If not, maybe limit your red meat if it's not going to be uh, grass fed organic. Um, and yeah, so lots of fibrous vegetables, um, some probiotics. Um, you know, if you're going to have a, a milk based probiotic, make sure it's organic because it doesn't make sense having a milk based probiotic, which comes from a cow, which has been given antibiotics. It's not going to work, <laughs> is it? Yeah. So like, wait, it's, this is fermented from a cow that's been given antibiotics and hormones. This ain't going to benefit me. So try and do a bit of research in the things that you buy. Um, if, if you buy products that say, if there are products, if the product says um, vegan, um, low fat, low carb, low sugar, all these types of things on it, then it's probably crap. Like Whole Foods don't have that stuff written on there. So if you're buying stuff like that, I would say limit it. Um, unless you're going to get something like a, a, a clean whey protein, like a whey protein isolate, which is uh, grass fed. Um, because if it's not grass fed, then it's going to be coming from, uh, you know, the, the milk is coming from a cow, which has been given hormones and antibiotics. So that's what yeah. you're consuming on a daily basis. And if you are having that on a daily basis, you are, if you think about it, you're having little amounts of antibiotics every day. If you become sick from something and you need an antibiotic as a, as a, as a last case scenario, you're almost going to be, it's almost going to be ineffective, you know, not that you should be taking antibiotics, but like you're making yourself more prone to sickness by having these type of things. So yeah, whole foods, try and stick to whole foods as much as you can, that Dude, in a nutshell. It's so true because, you know, throughout school and throughout like just, you know, no one taught us how to eat whole foods. It's so easy to like buy non-whole foods and eat all of those different things and learn the recipes and eat from the fast food restaurants and you get like so conditioned to eating how they all eat. So it's like a whole new process from teaching someone from scratch and sort of optimizing themselves is first learning about all the nutrients in the food, as you said, understanding all the different benefits as you just outlined like 20 just then in terms of what actually is in the whole foods and then yeah. learning how to cook them and make them taste good. It's like a whole new different skill and a whole new different just ability for just it's like a mindset shift, as you mentioned. Yeah. So man, Roger, thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you hey. so much for sharing all your wisdom, man. Like you're an absolute gem. And if people are looking, you. if people want to find you, man, um, where can they go? So, uh, as you mentioned, I'm on Instagram. Um, yeah, find me on Instagram. I post every day. Um, I'm also on Facebook. I do more Facebook lives. So yeah, um, both of them is just Roger Snipes. Obviously, uh, Instagram.com forward slash Roger Snipes. 
um, and facebook.com forward slash Roger Snipes. So just, you know, do the search. I'm on Twitter as well. Um, I do have a YouTube. Ho however, I only put uh, podcast videos on there at the moment. Um, and talking of podcasts, I do have a podcast myself called The Roger Snipes Show. So definitely check that out. I've got guests on every week talking about loads of different interesting stuff. Yeah, and you got some amazing guests on there too, man. So thank you for coming on the show, you, man, and keep doing what you're doing. No worries, brother. You take care now. Yeah, you too.